Staying on the market, so I want to talk about the jobs report. Joining us now, Mark Short, White House Director of Legislative Affairs. Mark, I'm sure you're going to say that this is a fantastic blockbuster jobs report. Go ahead and say it. Well, Stuart, it is. It's, it is a terrific report, and I think that it's not just the 313,000 for February, it's also the upward revisions for January and December. I know you'll know this, but keep in mind we recognize the government doesn't create these jobs. We create the environment in which the private sector can create these jobs, and we're excited about all the change we've made from a regulatory replace, uh, um, perspective as well as the tax relief that's allowing the private sector to take off. Uh, Mark, I don't know whether you've seen this or not yet, but for the benefit of our viewers, I'll tell you what's happening here. Nancy Pelosi has just released a statement on the jobs report. Here it is. February's job report shows that while jobs continue to be created, working Americans are still not getting the bigger paychecks they deserve. Strong job growth means little to the American workers forced to work multiple jobs because of stagnant wages. Next case, Republicans passed a debt-exploding GOP tax scam that hands massive windfalls to the rich and to corporations on the backs of hard-working Americans. Well, there you have it, Mark. What do you say? Well, Nancy Pelosi said that uh, the tax package would be an economic Armageddon. She said that it would be crumbs, and yet today we have 4.4 million workers across America who have either received a pay raise or a bonus. We have 432 companies we know of that have announced those pay raises and wage increases. I think that uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, continues to remain out of touch. Uh, maybe she wishes to go back to the Obama years when our GDP averaged 1.8 percent. We had no wage inflation, no wage growth. We think that the numbers are exactly perfectly in line, does not stoke uh, inflation fears, yet at the same time is providing a number that is a half a percent above CPI as far as wage inflation growth. So I just think that uh, her perspective of uh, what economic Armageddon looks like continues to remain out of touch. Can I ask you about the meeting between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un of North Korea? I want to go beyond the news that they're going to meet and ask you if the end game could be as follows. New, new, North Korea denuclearizes, South Korea denuclearizes, no nukes in, no, in South Korea, and American troops leave. Is that the kind of big picture deal which the president might have in mind? Well, Stuart, it, it's a good question. I don't want to get too far ahead. I think that we are very optimistic, but also cautious. We understand the path that previous administrations have had with North Korea. We understand his history. We understand that he is a murderous dictator. But we believe that it's the massive pressure that we've brought from the international community that has brought him to the table. And uh, we're going to maintain that consistent, massive pressure on him. And, and hopefully that uh, this president will have a better success than the previous president been. And I'm going to bet on this president. Okay. Just a moment ago, we were talking with the Tax Foundation president. He said, look, you go through with these tariffs on steel and aluminum, it's going to cost the states something like $9 billion. But, um, Mark, do you think that maybe the president's going to moderate those tariffs even more than he has already. He's excluded Mexico and Canada, maybe Australia, maybe our military allies. Can we expect some more moderation going forward? I think that the president is willing to exclude countries that are partnering with us on national security fronts as well as those that are providing fair and reciprocal trade and opening their markets the same way that we open our markets to them. So I think the short answer to your question is yes. I don't know that I consider that so much moderating. I think that uh, the reality is a lot of people said that we wouldn't get 3 percent GDP growth. And yet in the very first year, the last three quarters of 2017, the president achieved that. They said that we would not receive this sort of benefit from the tax plan. They said that we would not get the regulatory relief we've had. So there's a lot of people who said the things we can't do. I'm more looking forward to the things we're going to continue to do as this economy continues to grow. And I think the president's economic policies are going to do that. Representing the president this Friday morning, you're having a good time, aren't you, Mark? <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a very great uh, numbers day, but yeah. we're more excited for the working families across America that are beginning to see job growth. And, and uh, another one other point on Nancy Pelosi's comment is you'll know labor particip rate, participation yep. rate right. going back up to 63 percent is headed in the right direction. More people are getting back into the labor force well, and wanting to get back to work. 806, I think it was, 806,000 people in one yeah. month came back into the labor force. Right. That's a significant right. number. Mark Short, thanks very much for taking time out of a busy day. We appreciate it. Thanks, yourself. sir. Thanks yes, for having sir. me.